I'm here with another speaker from Objective Cologne, which is my uh, dear friend uh, Ken from Boston. And uh, so the very first question is, who are you and how do you pronounce your weird last name, which is from a weird country? I'm Ken Astersley. It's pronounced, we pronounce it Astersley. The uh, Flemish speakers in Belgium pronounce it Astersleach. And um, we think it may have originated in Germany, right near uh, Cologne. Really? But uh, we're not sure. What city? It's high, uh, right outside of Cologne, near where you live. Actually, there's a there's a small manor house called Gutachterschlag, and they uh, it's suspiciously similar to our name. Okay. And I hope to visit it while I'm out there. So the you're conference. actually actually you're back home. Yeah. Yeah. P potentially, it's it's hard to know for sure. <laughs> um, we'd have to do some serious uh, research and learn German probably to. Uh, yeah, figure it out. What you're just telling me is that you 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 were planning to stay a couple of days at home, but you're probably going to stay a couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah, by the way, I like the way we synchronized the color of our um, shirts today. Yeah, on purpose. Yeah, my, mine are, by the way, the official Objective Cologne um, uh, speaker's shirt. At least one of those is a green one. The other one is a official red one. And uh, I think in one of the videos I had a blue one. These will be the attendees one. So you you just told us your name and that you're basically a very good guy because you have Belgian origins. Uh, but uh, what's your company and what you guys are doing? Um, I'm half of Ecam Network. We uh, have been doing this for about eight years. Uh, we do uh, almost 100% Mac software. We dabbled in I iPhone when it first came out. Um, we stuck with the Mac along with a bunch of other companies. We are primarily Mac. Uh, okay. Ecamm makes a bunch of popular Mac apps. Printopia, a phone view, call recorder for Skype. Most people have heard of at least one of those. Um, and we have uh, three people in the company and we work with another person on Printopia. So we're a pretty small company. Okay. As things as things go, we we uh, like to keep it that way. Um, me and uh, the other owner of the company are in, we're from Massachusetts. Okay. So, and by by the way, it's worth mentioning that uh, it's worth mentioning that uh, um, we uh, have been using Core Recorder for Skype in some of the interviews. The very first one before I. Uh, started um, doing a little bit more work, but uh, it's uh, actually super easy and, and, and super used by a lot of uh, podcaster to have uh, either a double recording or a picture-in-picture -picture or even the advanced mode. Mm. Um, yeah, a, a lot of uh, podcasts use it to record their audio interviews or video interviews. Um, I know that we just had uh, some pretty high-profile bloggers buy it. Um, so that's exciting. Okay, cool. So you were probably um, one of the first ones. I think the very first one is Altwin, at which, to which I asked uh, if he wanted to come speak over at my conference. And the other one was uh, uh, was you, actually, the next one. So why did you accept to come uh, speak at my conference? Oh, I, I love getting invited to speak at conferences. Um, I'll never pass up uh, an opportunity to, to travel to some place and and share uh, my knowledge with other people. And uh, I always say, though, that, that more than half of the experience at conferences is, is meeting the other attendees, um, socializing and networking, and getting to, um, to see the people that we interact with on the computer but never get to see in person. So when I go out to a conference like this one or, or 360 uh, MacDev or, um, or NS conference, it's it's just it's more like a um, a big party really. And um, the, the, the sessions are always fantastic, and I'm really looking forward to being an attendee at, at the other sessions that that you have scheduled. Mm -hmm. But I'm also really excited to meet all the people who are going to be there. And um, I, I was just thinking that uh, just like uh, Jason Harris, uh, which we still going to have to interview. Uh, I guess one of the things you like in such conference not organized by Apple is that uh, we speak about, uh, uh, we can, we may speak about um, non-official, non-public APIs uh, and hacky-she uh, things, stuffs. 
it's possible that that such topics may be breached. <laughs> it's uh yeah, it's always possible since we are not uh we're not uh guided by Apple, I would say. Um all right, so speaking of which, speaking of what you're going to speak about, uh you um uh what are what are you going to speak about? Uh my talk is going to be about uh how do you how to use the debugger tools that Apple gives you to take better control of your of your um development process. Uh, it sounds like it might be you know a little bit of a boring topic, but in fact it's uh it's actually really cool. A, a lot of, I'm always surprised by the uh the amount of developers I talk to who who don't uh seem to be taking full advantage of the um the debugger that uh, people don't realize that you can debug uh into other people's programs that you can do powerful things with the debugger like set um set actions on breakpoints um mm -hmm. and things like that uh to help you not just solve problems but but also um discover new ways of doing things and to uh help you optimize your code for instance um if you're working on a real time system like a recorder you can't be setting actual breakpoints or else the um recording won't work so you can actually you can set breakpoints that don't actually break you can set breakpoints that that log information execute commands um test test um registers so i'm going to be talking about that hopefully showing some cool examples of the way that you can use this to make discoveries about how the operating system works Funny, it totally remembers me, reminds me, <laughs> Jason Harris would kill me right now, totally reminds me, um, uh, speaking of him, um, at NS conference a few years ago, I think actually the, the very first year in 2009, he uh, was there and he was um, um, debugging my code with GDB in the terminal, and uh, it mm. was, for me, it was kind of a something I have a funny enough I had never seen at all because I came from a world where breakpoints are set in an IDE and sure. actually when, I, uh, when, when I'm outside of the IDE I, I run after my mom and start crying <laughs> well, when, you're, uh, when, you're, when your code crashes it's not usually in it's often not in your own code you might be down in some system API where you don't have the source code to it and if you don't actually know uh, about the registers of your processor, you're missing out on a lot. Um, it, it's it's actually it sounds complicated, but it's actually fairly simple to look in the registers that Xcode shows you, and see what the arguments to the function were, uh, see what routines are being called, and what the error codes were, mm -hmm. and actually try to take a guess at what uh, the code that you're crashing in is doing. Mm -hmm. um, additionally. Uh, Apple's tools can be used to optimize your code. Now, a lot of people don't just pull up the uh, performance, uh, the CPU usage uh, tool, and try to figure out where their code is going slow. But there's a lot of other ways to use those tools to optimize your code. Okay. Uh, for example, um, CPU usage is one thing, but but uh, memory allocations are actually take the computer a long time. So I often use the object alloc tool to optimize my code. Um, I'm gonna show an example of that. Yeah, that's uh, that, that's interesting because speaking of CPU uh, usage, we were just before we start recording uh, watching the Skypes and QuickTime at the same time CPU usage. Uh, but uh, very soon I'm not gonna have any problems with CPU usage anymore because I'm gonna have uh, written a MacBook Pro. You you have your one by the way already? No, I, I don't have it yet. Um. <laughs> but it's coming, right? I probably have one by the fall. Cause uh, by the fall, but but you ordered it when I was in the elevator with you, right? Oh no, I canceled that order. Ah! <laughs> I just I decided I would uh, not uh, pay the the uh, sales tax from ordering it online. If I if I buy it in a store near me, I I don't pay sales tax. Mm. You know, all of the states have different laws. I know. And uh, you, the price is not the actual price you will pay. It uh, doesn't make any sense. But yeah, I guess it's probably like ounces and inches and and all those funky stuff you guys have. 
Well, I don't usually worry about the, the, ta- the, the tax, but when you're buying something that's four thousand dollars, that the tax really adds up. I, I worry about the price not being the price that it says the price is, even if it's a banana. Which, by the way, I had it with a banana in San Fran. I was like, dude, sixty-four cents, but it says forty-nine. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. T- I didn't know times were so tough. Stuff. Yeah, it is. You know, that's why I'm organizing a conference. You know, it's just to uh, to swim in my cash. As as everybody knows, it's the best way to make money, organizing a conference. Yeah. Anyways, um, for those who don't know, I'm just kidding. Um, speaking of the conference, how do you imagine the conference will be? It's um, you. You by the way, you haven't spoken at a lot of conference. You you did it at a few. I think you did. You did, for example, I'm totally jealous about you. Uh, uh, you did C4, I think, as a speaker. Um, so how do you imagine uh, Objective Cologne is going to be? If you if you want to compare it with with C4, I'm totally fine with that. Oh, it's always hard to know what these things are going to be like. Um, I've spoken at uh, C4, like you said. I did a short talk at NS conference, and um, we were also I was also invited to speak at um, 360 MacDev last last year or earlier this year. And they're always they're all different. Um, it's always a different kind of crowd. It's always a different set setup and different atmosphere. I have a feeling this conference is going to be pretty fun. Um, I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of Germans there, and yeah. I, I have a feeling that uh, it's it's going to be in a really cool location. And um, I'm pretty sure we're going to have a good time, uh, as well as getting to hear some really interesting speakers. I'm excited about uh, Jason's talk, Mike's talk, um, Drew's talk, Orwin's talk, everybody's talk. You write uh, Glenn's, about a lot of uh, you Glenn's write talk. about a lot of stuff. You write about the Germans. You write about uh, the fun location. And actually, speaking of a, a funny conference, I'm uh, working on the on the evening, which I pro- probably I, I found a very string- interesting place. I still have to check it, and, uh, and like my wife was telling me to telling to me, I still have to go there and eat there as an unknown incognito guy to check if the food is 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 nice. Um, but it might be something pretty cool. Um, so okay, the very last question before I leave you because uh, actually your day is starting right now, right? It's about ten thirty. Oh, okay, that's cool. So this is what my th- this is al- this is also when my day starts. Uh, <laughs> now all the people waking every day at six a.m. hate me. Um, what can you say to those people who haven't bought their tickets yet? Some of them have started buying their tickets uh, after the early bird because they needed to be. But some of them are still like, hmm, I don't know, I'm unsure, it's a lot of money and blah, blah, blah. What can you say to those well, folks? It's really not a lot of money when you look at what you're getting from it. It is um, not, yeah. If you're just sitting at home working on your app, iPhone or Mac or otherwise, you're really um, in a vacuum, and you need to get out there and meet other people in the community, uh, come together with other people in your um, your continent, mm-hmm. and meet meet people from uh, other parts of the world, and uh, get inspired. Uh, the number one thing about these conferences is inspiration. Uh, yeah, uh, and 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 meeting people who you might be able to work with in the future, or or. Um, mm. uh, if, 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 if this is just an, this is your chance to take a business trip and and really um, get out of, outside of your um, office and, and uh, enjoy some company of fellow iPhone and Mac developers. That's interesting. You speak about um, um, being inspired, inspired, inspiration. That's a topic we haven't touched yet. But uh, definitely, every time I come back from one of those conferences, I'm filled, pumped again, and ready to go. Fired up, ready uh, to go. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it, it's just the most inspiring thing to hear, hear what everyone is, what everybody's doing, and, and and meet people who are just so passionate about these these projects they're working on. And you think, well, I got to get back on my computer right now and start coding. Yeah. Yeah, and by the way, for those who haven't booked yet, and uh, really. Uh, if prob prob most probably the the conference for because it's the first year is not going to be completely fully sold out, but uh, if 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 some of you are are totally definitely planning to go, but they are just thinking yeah I might book later don't book later book now please, uh, <laughs> for different reason and the number one reason is just or organiz- organizational reason for me it's not even about money, it's just about um, having the numbers. 
uh, as fixed as possible. Um, I have to order a bunch of stuff. Um, yesterday I just received fig five big boxes. I was just uh, very grossly uh, saying to the to the postman, what did my wife order again? And it wasn't my wife, <laughs> it was me. <laughs> I just didn't expect those boxes to be as big. And uh, Well, this is a hundred um, cups. By the way, uh, yeah. We have a funny internal joke between Ken and me, which I might explain about cups. Those are nice um, objective colon cups that uh, an atten all attendees will get, as well as t-shirts, as well as a nice pen and uh, maybe some other funky stuff. I don't know. We'll see. Um, bags, by the way. I still have to order some kind of bags to put the things in this. So tons of stuff to order, and as soon as I know how many people we are, um, it's I easier for me. All right, Ken, um, thank you very much for being with us. Um, and uh, I will have to uh, do a Skype call with another Espeslag, or Espeslag. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> well, it was really good. It was really good talking to you. Yeah. I uh, can't wait to, uh, to be touch, down in, touch down in Germany. We will search for your origins together. Yes. We will find well, the people. You'll have to be my translator when we knock on the door. I thought you were going to come and speak fluently German. Oh, you know, I actually don't even know a few words in German. Yeah, I remember you can just say bye-bye in German. Do you know that? Uh, no. All wait, right. don't tell me. Don't tell me. It's coming back. Uh, um, That's not an easy one, by the way. It's we will it, see. It's it's literally we will see us again. I know this. Th I know this one though. All right. Oh, whatever. We don't have the 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 next half an hour. That would be Auf Wiedersehen. I knew that. Everybody <laughs> knows that. All right. Auf Wiedersehen, Ken, and uh, see you very soon. Yeah, bye. Bye. Uh, thank you.